Snaps from Sydney, 2003, and Candidly Inclined, 2005, are self-published works of Sydney, Australia's resident street photographer and Kodachrome voyeur, Andrew Stark. Born and raised in Sydney, circa 1964, Stark has been photographing his hometown surroundings for 25 plus years. Carting around his battered and beat up secondhand Konica TC, he allows that the equipment is less important than the truth it captures. His preference is black and white film, as much for the aesthetic of the final product as it is for the economy of the process, fully acknowledging that one does not choose to become a street photographer for glitter or the gold. He actually admits that street photography chose him. A visual diary of a very long walk is how Andrew Stark describes his work. His exhibits include Starkers, 2006, at the Museum of Sydney, and Down South, a depiction of the Sutherland Shire District known for the 2005 Cronulla race riots, commissioned and shown by the Hazelhurst Gallery in 2008. Also credited to Stark is his book, Escaping into Life, a psycho study of the contemporary street photographer published in 2000. On the subject of his profession, he states, that you work with no net is seen as foolhardy by most, yet you've known from that very first wobbly step that timidity dilutes photographic achievement. And great poetry never rhymes. Ever non-intrusive, Stark observes, awaiting that moment in time that piques his interest. He's looking for something that can be viewed as both humorous and serious, truthfully depicting the personality of the city and its inhabitants. When asked what reaction he hoped to get from his audience, he simply stated, as for what people take from my pics, I have no idea. But I like ambiguity, vulnerability, and a slight melancholy hue, so I guess I'd hope some people get that vibe too. I shoot the passers by using a strictly non-interference style. I have no idea what I'm looking for, but seem to photograph it nevertheless. Though somewhat poignant with words, his pictures tell stories of their own, oftentimes allowing the personality of the photographer to shine through. Take this shot, Potts Point. One can definitely see the humor of Stark shining through. How ironic is this picture of these women on the exiting side of 70 in Stark, no pun intended, contrast to the youthful and beautiful billboard girl, past and future in one frame. He also seems to like taking photos with reflections to muddy the senses. Look closely at Manly. In the look of confusion on the man's face, one can feel his sense of loss. What might he be looking for? Then allow yourselves to wander deeper into the photograph. It's as if the woman walking in the corridor is searching for him. The circle is now complete. In George Street City, we wonder where Stark's interest lies. The shadows and light play with his senses as much as the reflection of the bag-carrying man in the billboard contradicts the boy longing to run into the water. Pitt Street Martin Place clearly defines the indifference of today's society. It's as if the crowd assumes this is a daughter's public meltdown, best left to ignore so as not to embarrass. Are we witnessing in this shot a father's compassion for a fallen child? What happened just prior to this moment in time? One has to wonder what it is that's so compelling in the distance that no one can be bothered to turn and offer assistance. The magic, emotion-charged moments are, in my experience, invariably captured using an almost subconscious process. They must never be orchestrated and can rarely be dogmatically collated. On to mascot. I can only imagine the sole purpose to this photograph is to make one smile. Having a giant toad watch a balding man eat his sandwich while being ignored by all others in the room is, I've got to admit, hilarious. To be a candid street photographer, in my case, legitimizes social frailties etched annoyingly into my character. It has been a rather difficult endeavor to find more than the occasional interview with Stark. What I have found, though, describes him as a humorous loner. I've also been unable to locate a photograph of him. Is this intentional? A conscious effort to remain anonymous to the public eye? 
there seems to be no mention of Mr. Stark after May of 2011 when his blog abruptly ends. Self-proclaimed nowhere man. I'm wondering if by choosing this moniker he has sealed his own fate or if he simply wanted to be true to his personality and fade back into obscurity. One would be hard-pressed to fit Mr. Stark's style of photography into one of the tidy little categories used by today's industry. Street photography is in a class all to itself. Documentary, perhaps. Though it's not an event that's being captured, it's a moment in time, an emotion, a glimpse. Explanatory, perhaps. And that over time, Mr. Stark's images depict the societal differences created over a quarter century's worth of shutter clicks. Ethically evaluative, now that would be a stretch, although some critics would interpret injustice or even make ethical judgment based on his works. Their intent is simply to capture what is uncontrived, unposed, and unorchestrated, such as Stark, street photographer.